Hello my lovelies. So I thought I would go ahead and give an update on how I am doing. Hopefully you can hear me with all this and my heaters running. <coughs> I'm home. I am feeling better but still a lot of breathing issues and just kind of feeling down in the dumps but I ate something this morning I checked my blood glucose it was down to 48 which is the lowest I've seen it in a really long time so I went ahead and ate something I don't know if many of you know but I have type 2 and it Usually, my fasting sugar usually runs around 102, which is still a little bit high for my opinion, but it's not the end of the world. But today, I checked it, and it was 48, so significantly lower. But that's just because I've been drinking a lot more water. I drink water a lot anyway, but I mean by the gallons now, as much as I can get down. And I just haven't had much of an appetite. And what I have been eating, I've been throwing up. So that's not great. Uh, what do I have? I have the variation of COVID called SARS COVID 2. Um, just basically means it is your respiratory system. You can tell I am on a steroid and that has helped a lot I am on the mend even though it may not sound like it I feel a lot better today than I did yesterday and that says something the fever has broken for now yeah so I could just the cough is dry, so dry, no, con like, no rattling congestion, as I call it, you know, where the mucus rattles when you cough, none of that is just dry, and that's new to me, but I've heard that it's a dry cough, so, makes sense, um, Not a lot to report, just that it hits fast. And I mean fast. And it has no mercy. It doesn't care who you are, how much water you drink, how much you exercise, how many vegetables you eat. It doesn't care. If you're vegan or non-vegan or vegetarian, or if you exercise every single day or what it does not care <clears throat> sorry if my voice isn't as loud as it usually is <laughs> I just want people to be careful we did everything we could we wore masks but my youngest the three-year-old he does not wear masks and he was in school and he brought it home and it happens there's no one to blame I'm not blaming the school I'm not blaming the teachers I'm not blaming the kid it happens thank goodness for doctors and hospitals and tests and medicine and fluids I mean because I just wouldn't be doing as good as I am right now <clears throat> I had contemplated not doing this video but I finally decided to go ahead because I just think there needs to be an awareness out there and I know it's easy to scoff 
when government officials are telling us all this stuff and it's easy to say, oh, that's not real. They're lying to us. But I'm not a government official. I'm a stay-at-home mom with three kids and rent. I have no agenda in this other than just to warn you to be careful. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Take your vitamins. Get you some immune support. See, that helps. Um, drink plenty of water and exercise. I'm not telling anybody to run out and get a vaccine. I'm not telling everybody to lock yourselves in your home and not come out because that's unrealistic. I'm not telling everybody to just hop on the next conspiracy train and ride it to the wheels fall off. Because that's crazy. I'm just telling you, when you go to the bathroom, wash your hands. Before you sit down to eat, wash your hands. It's a little soap and water. Wear a mask. Take your vitamins. Drink plenty of water. Exercise if you can. You know, if it's just walking around your block, that's something. Doing a few squats in your living room. Every teeny tiny step helps. You know, if you could get you some vitamin C, drink you some orange juice. That's yummy. I love orange juice with breakfast. I can't have it hardly because I have type 2. But once in a while, like when I'm on vacation and stuff, or at the holidays during the cold weather when, you know, sickness is flying around like the flu and stuff, I'll have me a half a glass of orange juice in the morning. I just chase it with a bottle of water, and I exercise a little more inside the house. And so far, I haven't had any real dangerous problems with my sugar. I've never had ketoacidosis. I've never been close to it. And I'm not on insulin. So, and I've had it for two years. So, my doctor's happy. He just says, you know, if I could get that fasting sugar down a little lower. And I'm working on it. Um, two years ago, it was a much different story. Uh, I'm not going to go too much, but my glucose levels were reaching dangerous levels, like 300. And that's scary. And now I've gone from 300 to about 100. So I worked hard. I did what I had to do. I started drinking water. I took my medicine, exercising, um, you know, stuff like that. It runs in my family. And I have hypothyroidism. So, you know, and then this was right after I lost my job. So, I was probably eating in ways I probably shouldn't have. And that was my fault. And I admit it. I take full blame. But the minute you told me that my glucose level was, or my sugar level, whatever it is, um, was 300, I got on it. Um, I don't remember what... The other number was my A1C was like a 13, which is way too high. Now my A1C is about a 6. So that's a huge difference. Is there room for improvement? Yeah, of, of course. There's always room for improvement. In everybody's lives, there's always room for improvement. Always strive for improvement within a healthy limit. But... Am I proud of myself for all the hard work I've done in the past two years? Yes, I am so proud of myself. Lots and lots of water. Um, cutting out carbs. Um, I know a few of you have seen me eat carbs in the past. I do do a few videos where I eat carbs. But then after that, it's water, 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 water. And usually a salad that night so by the time the next morning my a1c i'm sorry not a1c my sugar levels usually are above about 102 and still room for improvement always room for improvement like i said this morning my sugar levels were 48 so that's a huge difference so oh but also something that might have helped with that, I keep forgetting to mention, 
as I have recently started on cinnamon tablets. It was recommended to me by my pharmacist. Um, cinnamon tablets. If you have problems with your sugar, try some cinnamon tablets by Nature Valley. I think that's what's called Nature Valley. No, that doesn't seem right. I'll look up the name and tell you. Anyway, it's something natural. Something with valley in it. Anyway, I'll look it up. And I've been taking two a day. Two cinnamon tablets a day. As well as my medicine and lots and lots and lots of water. I go through about a gallon of water a day now. And I love it. I absolutely love it. In my pantry, I have gallons and gallons and gallons and gallons of water. I just buy a couple every time I go to the store or have somebody to go to the store for me right now because I can't go to the store. I just, on my little list, I write two gallons of water. So, yay. But I've gotten off on a different topic. Sorry about that. Anyway, it all just ties in with this virus. Water does seem to help kind of keep the mucus thinned. Not as thick. It thins it down, but when I have been vomiting, I've been vomiting mucus. Like, you can see it. But not only can you see it, and I'm sorry if this triggers anybody. I'm not trying to. So, if this bothers you talking about, um, you know, stuff like this, just, just skip ahead. Just, just skip the whole video. Throw the whole video away. But it smells... And the best way I can explain it is it smells like garbage. Like foul smelling garbage. But that's not the only thing I've noticed that smells like that. My sweat smells like garbage. Like, ew. And my pee. Smells like garbage. It is humiliating. I'm not even gonna lie. Which I know that's the least of my problems, being humiliated. And I may sound a little entitled there, and I'm sorry. But ew. And then I'm already nauseated. So that smell I just don't feel like coming out and eating a sandwich with some chips afterwards or chicken noodle soup or anything. It kinda just makes me feel like Ew. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but that's how I'm doing. I'm cuddled up. I feel like I'm trying to go to sleep. But anyway, I did want to make this quick video because I want to let everybody know that A, I am getting better. Even though I may not look like it. B, I am alive, and C, I do plan to have more videos coming out soon. Um, I don't know what they're going to look like, but hopefully by time Tuesday or Wednesday, I should start making a huge, like, comeback, according to the doctor. I should start feeling much, much, much better, and if I don't, then they're going to readmit me to the hospital for observation. But feeling how I feel today, I feel very confident that I'm going to bounce back from this just fine. And come next week, this is just going to be like a story I tell friends about what happened to me. Just like a memory. Just, you know, the past. It's going to be like, yeah, it was rough. But, I made it through. So, that's that. Anyway. Um, one thing I want to mention real quick. If you're a church person, and you're sending out people to homes to give cards and stuff, I look, I love Christmas cards, but stop. Stop it. I had a woman beating on my door this morning. She was not wearing a mask or anything. 
and she was screaming through my door. I know she could see me. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. I'm having a coughing fit, and she's just pounding on my door. Well, finally, I get up because I think I didn't realize who she was. I thought somebody was dying or something. So I thought, oh, Lord, what if I sit here and somebody dies? What if she's been in a car accident? What if she's seen a car accident? So I run to my door. I did not open it, but I yelled to the door as loud as I could. Is this an emergency? And she was like, no, I'm from such and such church. And I have, and I didn't even let her finish. I said, look, I'm not trying to be ugly. But I have SARS COVID too. Go home. Drop the card or whatever on the porch and go home. I'm not opening this door. Do you not realize, ma'am, that we're in a pandemic? I was like, please, you're not even wearing a mask and you look like you're about 60 or 70. Go home. And again, that was a jab at her age, but I'm not blind. With my glasses on. I'm not blind. And I told her, I said, go home. You're walking up to homes not even knowing what's going on. Most people are as generous as I am. They just open the door. I said, I'm warning you. I have SARS COVID too. Please go home. Go home and be with your family. Stop this nonsense. And she took off running down the um sidewalk. And I guess she went home. Or walk, walkway, whatever you want to call it. And I guess she went home or to another house, probably. I hate to say it, but my words probably meant nothing to her. And, uh, but I'm not opening the door. Not for anybody. Not UPS. Not churchgoers. Not government officials. Not anybody. Not family. Unless you live here. Not the mailman. I don't care who you are. If you're in an emergency situation, I'll, kind, I'll call 911 for you. But I'm not opening the door. You'll have to go elsewhere. I'll, I'll be a good Samaritan and I'll call, I'll call 911. But I'm not answering that door. So, I mean, I know my, you know, most people might think, wow, she's really mean. But I'm not trying to be. I'm trying to keep people from going through what I'm going through. I know I put on YouTube a comment to a video that said I was suffering from SARS-CoV-2. Everybody, please be safe. And I started getting so much hate from children. It had to be children telling me they don't need a mommy telling me what to do. And quit trying to spread my propaganda. I'm sorry, but sit in the hospital trying to breathe is not propaganda. Sitting at home trying to stay well is not propaganda. I didn't say anything about anything other than be safe. If you take offense to that, that's your problem. That's on you. <laughs> that's not on me. That's on you. So, I'm going to say it anyway. I don't care who it makes mad. Stay safe. I care about y'all, so stay safe. And please take this as a warning. See you in the next one.